apart from some analysis from RITAC or uh, some other assessment agency, uh, would would not have would not have given rise to the collection of additional in information. So uh, whether there's an intelligence failure here or not, I think is open to question. Professor Wark, and again, briefly. <laughs> How can I be brief on this? Ken, thank you though. Listen, I would say, first of all, um, discussing intelligence failure is just an inescapable reality. Um, you know, the, the challenge for the commissioner, I think, is deciding um, how real this was, how serious it was, what the nature of the impact uh, was on the uh, absence of, of critical pieces of, of good intelligence, whether it's early warning intelligence or intelligence, for example, on, on the fact that slow rolling convoys might turn into border blockades, as well as the question of whether there might be armed factions at, at some of those border blockades. So I, I, and I would also say, not only is it, is it an important thing to think about, but it's out there in the public domain. Uh, it is a question that has to be answered because it has been raised in the public domain uh, and, and in, in the media. Uh, it cannot be avoided. Uh, is it the real issue? You know, I think it is. I guess just reinforce the point that I made at the beginning. I think that there is a direct link between intelligence failures, policing failures, and the circumstance in which the uh, cabinet found themselves uh, in, a, in a rush of decision-making over a few short days before the uh, Emergencies Act uh, was invoked. And it's important to remind ourselves that the incident response group was only called for the very first time on February 10th, and the decision to invoke the Emergencies Act uh, was issued on February 14th. That is crisis decision-making um, uh, in its purest form. And it, it, I think it is clear, at least in my mind, from, from the evidence that we've heard, uh, that there was a lot of uncertainty about uh, the threat uh, that was being faced, particularly the future manifestations uh, of, that, of that threat. So yes, uh, intelligence failure is a big issue, and I'll finish on that, Kent. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fadden. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I don't like the expression, not because I worked in intelligence, and as, as Ward said, I certainly have had my fair share with my colleagues, but I would think of it more as an advance warning failure, because we, or at least I articulated the view that government was in receipt of information from any number of sources, not just intelligence, and uh, seemingly none of these sources, be they from the police or anywhere else, you know, sort of got up and rang the alarm bell. Uh, part of this is, I think, structural. Part of it is, I think, people just couldn't believe this was going to happen in Canada, which is one of our problem with these issues. Um, but also, in terms of failures, I think it's important to distinguish between what I would characterize as operational failures. You know, something didn't happen in the context of, you know, the public order, uh, order, or what might be termed more strategic. I mean, did we have, as a country, a general view of where right-wing extremism was going in its opposition to the COVID mandates or not. I don't think we did that particularly well. And for that, you didn't need the secret intelligence and the intrusive methods of collection the CSIS have to do. Uh, any number of people could have done this. Uh, some think tanks could have done this better than was the case. So I think I would, uh, I would dilute a bit your question by saying, were there failures? Absolutely. I'm not sure it was exclusively intelligence. I think we could spread the blame. Also remembering that intelligence is advice. It, it's not determinative. And I think sometimes people forget that. Thanks. Thank you. Professor West. So I, I would agree that I, I, from what I've seen, um, to me, didn't seem to be an intelligence failure, but a failure to act on that intelligence. And what we really had was a federalism failure. The Emergencies Act is based on the premise of everyone doing their jobs at the municipal, provincial, and federal levels. That's a good point. And that didn't happen. Um, I think, to me, that is the biggest failure that we need to take away from this. Well, thank you very much. And I, my sincere thanks to thank the panelists sure. for your patience and brevity. And again, Mr. Commissioner, I hope this is of some use.